Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Good morning. I want to extend a warm welcome to our Norwich family and to all of our visitors who are with us today. It's wonderful to see you on such a beautiful day. We're happy that you've joined us as we gather to worship our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Easter is a time of renewal of life and celebration of the greatest of all victories, life over death. We'd like to bring your attention to some announcements that are in the um, bulletin today. You will see the insert that includes the um, about the, <clears throat> excuse me, the Easter lilies that are in the sanctuary this morning, and want to remind you that if you ordered lilies, please feel free to take them to take them home with you today after service. We appreciate them, and we certainly want to um, remember and honor the people that they were, for whom they were given. That's good English. I had to stop and think about that. <laughs> for whom they were given. Following the service, the children are invited to gather at the front doors for the annual Easter egg hunt. If you didn't come prepared with baskets or, or bags, one will be provided for you. And I understand there's even a, a section for our, our smaller little ones. So that will be a fun time. Next Saturday, men's breakfast information is in the update. And uh, bring your attention to a new life class that's being offered after service at 11 o'clock in the library weekly. So um, feel free to ask questions if you need more information and take a look at the other announcements that are there as well. And what a special Easter it is for the Breiberg family. And Brett, Shelby, and Bridger welcomed little Bristol Rose to the family on Monday. And we're so happy to have her and her family with us today. So if you haven't had a chance to take a peek, I've just seen the back of the head, but that's good. That's good for today. So what a blessing. Please stand, if able, and join me in the prayer of invocation. Lord God, we gather this Easter morning to celebrate the resurrection of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You loved this world so much that you gave your one and only Son so that we might have everlasting life. Lord, help us to live in the gladness and grace of Easter Sunday every day. Let us have hearts of thankfulness for your sacrifice and inspire us to change the way we live each day beyond Easter. Strengthen our beliefs so that we might continue enjoying spiritual treasures from you as we take comfort in the promise of the life to come. Be with us this morning as we worship together, lifting praise and thanksgiving for the gift of salvation that we have been given through the resurrection of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to invite all the children who are present who would like to come forward and join me for a very special Easter children's moment. They just knew to sit down all by themselves. <laughs> well, how are we doing this morning? Good. Good. You guys aren't very excited. I'm excited. Are you excited? Yeah. I'm ex- Maybe. That could be it. Why else might I be excited? Bible study. Bible study? Yeah, I like to Bible study. That's right. What else? God has risen from the dead. Absolutely. You know what else I'm excited about? Easter. Easter, that's right. I brought something with me today. You guys might be interested in this. Maybe, I I don't know. I found this this morning, and I think that means I win the Easter egg hunt, right? I found the golden egg. I win, right? No? That's yours? Well, I tell you what. Do you guys want to open and see what's inside of it? Yeah? What do you think's inside of it, Bridger? Don't know? Jack, what do you think? Paper? Candy? Holly? You got an idea? Okay. Chocolate? Toys? Dollar coin. I wish there was dollars in here. What do you think? Candy. Candy? Candy. Yeah. Zoe, you got an idea? Candy? Candy? Baby ate candy. Any idea? No. Yeah. I bet it's going to be cool, though. But, you know, it's, 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 well, I don't know. I'll just let you, I'm going to let them see first. Is that okay? No. No, I'm going to do it anyways. All righty. If I can figure it, remember how to open it. Oh. Wow. All right. What do y'all think's in it? Remember rhyme again? Toys. Toys? Toys. What if I told you? Jesus, Jesus. Oh, nothing. It's a tomb. It's a tomb. That's right. It's empty. Just like Jesus' grave was empty this morning. So that's really why we're here today is to celebrate the fact that the tomb is empty and to chase golden easter eggs around yeah you guys want to pray with me real quick dear jesus thank you for bringing us here this morning to learn about your son and the fact that the grave was empty we thank you for this in your name we pray amen Amen. all right y'all go sit down we'll see you later jack We do celebrate this morning the, the gifts of this day and especially the fact that we are here gathered together as the church at worship. I invite you to turn to your neighbor real quick and, and, and maybe share what you're excited about this day. So what are we excited about this morning? 
He is risen. Absolutely. What else are we excited about today? Chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> Sunshine, warm weather, more chocolate. Wonderful breakfast. Fellowship. Jesus, family. Full church. Absolutely great music. You know, we do come as a worshiping body every Sunday and we gather in this place, but there is something special about Easter morning, about the promise of new beginnings and life everlasting. We join me in prayer. Almighty God, we give thanks to you this day for the blessings, the blessings of this life which we awaken to each morning and today we remember more clearly and more purposefully the air that we breathe and the spirit and the soul at work in our lives and in our bodies. We come to you on this Easter morning as your church gathered as we are, imperfect and yet unified in one hope and one truth. The resurrection takes place not only this day, but every day of our lives. Allow us to see, O oh God, how we are an Easter people. Allow us to carry this enthusiasm and excitement into the world around us that we may share with others the hope and the love that we have found in you. Grant us today, O oh God, that peace, that peace that we feel when we are near to thy presence, that we may be not only peacemakers, but your people. We thank you. We thank you for the gift of the empty tomb and the promise found in your son of life and life everlasting. And so as one body, together we pray the prayer that your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. to 
the teaching that they heard and wondered at the mystery of his word. They wondered what he meant about a father's plan. They heard, but could they really understand? Could not, they could not, though they tried, they could not. They listened to the teaching about a father's plan, but could they really understand? They Wow, thank you, Randy. Hmm. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. We hear these words as recorded, beginning with the first verse. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus, and they were perplexed about this. And behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel, and they were frightened. And they bowed their faces to the ground, and the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified on the third day and rise 
And they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other woman with them, who told these things to the apostle. But these words seemed to be an idle tale, and so they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home, marveling at all that had happened. May we hear this as a living word this morning. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, our rock and our salvation. So here we are on Easter morning, here at the ending point, or maybe the beginning point of the journey that we've been on for the last few months. We're at the end of Holy Week. We've seen many things. We've been to an upper room. We've heard Jesus pray over the disciples. We've heard the voices of Good Friday speak and tell the story. And we've waited. We've waited in uncertainty and silence for what is taking place this morning. And so on this Sunday morning, as we come here to worship in church, we recall that on the first Easter, the disciples went to a cemetery to see a stone rolled away. And we wonder why people think we're kind of weird sometimes. Easter is considered by many, in fact most, to be the holiest day of the Christian year. It's a day where we gather and adorn ourselves in celebration of the promise of this day. While Easter may be the holiest day of the year, we often think of Christmas Eve as the holiest night of the year. Now, we may wonder what makes Easter the holiest day of the year. It's not the hole in the rock face where the stone was supposed to be that makes it holy. It's not the holiest day of the year because when you were younger, you were gathering Easter eggs with your cousins and you put your foot in a hole in the ground and you tripped and all of your Easter eggs went spilling everywhere. And then your cousins took them from you. (laughs) That doesn't make it the holiest day of the year. It's not the holiest day of the year because we don't wear our holy jeans to church on Easter. In fact, Easter is often not the same day. Oftentimes it's in March, sometimes it's in April. It was once even on April Fool's Day. Now, let me tell you something. That was an easy sermon to write that day. (laughs) Surprise! He's not here! Don't be a fool. (laughs) Believe in him. So what is the big deal about Easter. If it's not about the bunny and and the chocolate and, and the smarties and the nerds and the airheads, trust me, there's always airheads around. If it's not about all of that, then what is Easter really about? It's a great question. It's an answer that is both straightforward and kind of circular. As Christians, 
When we think of Easter, it's hard for us not to think of Easter within the framework of Christmas. You see, we spend a good part of the year journeying from Bethlehem to this tomb near Jerusalem. And throughout this journey, we we learn what it means to walk with Jesus and to have faith and, and to be kind and considerate and compassionate to others. We see the miracles that Jesus works and it teaches us. It teaches us that Christmas is the promise of God coming into this world to save the world. We see in this journey to Jerusalem that Jesus is the fulfillment of Emmanuel, God with us and God for us. In the cries of a newborn babe, we hear the the promise of life and life everlasting. And so, if that is what Christmas is about, if Christmas is about life, then Easter, Easter must be a fulfillment of the promise of God to sustain the world. In the emptiness and the silence of the tomb, we hear loudly and boldly proclaimed the promise of life and life everlasting. And yet, as human beings, for some reason, it's easier for us to believe that the Son of God, Jesus, could come as an infant It's easier to believe that than it is to believe that Jesus rose from the dead. I mean, we have to do Easter egg gymnastics in our head and in our mind. It shouldn't be possible. It doesn't make sense. And yet, the reality is, when we come to this place on this morning when we go and see the tomb that is empty, the cross that is adorned in white, and we stand together and proclaim, he is risen. And we respond, he is risen indeed. There is no human explanation. And yet I bet if I asked every single one of you, you would say with absolute certainty in your heart, You know that to be the truth of this life and the life that is to come. Maybe that's what Easter is about. It's about learning that we do not have to live in fear of sin. And we don't have to live in fear of death, that we don't even have to live in fear of life. For we stand in wonderment, continuous wonderment of the works of our God and God's spirit moving in our lives. And we know beyond a shadow of a doubt beyond the shadow of death, that we serve a risen Savior and we follow the call of the living Lord. And this, this gives us hope and it gives us certainty in a world that is so uncertain at times and hopeless Our hope, our life, is found in an empty tomb. And the promise of what is and what is yet to be. 
Maybe that's what Easter is about. Standing in the wonderment of life. Read a story a few weeks ago. I thought it was kind of appropriate to share this morning. Man, a man and his wife took a vacation to Israel with his mother-in-law. Now, during their time in the Holy Land, his mother-in-law unexpectedly passed away. The following day, the husband met with the local funeral home to discuss arrangements. In cases like this, the funeral home said there are a couple options you can choose from. You can ship her body home back to the United States for about $10,000. Or you can bury her here in the Holy Land for about 150 bucks. Man took a moment to think about it. And then loudly announced, we want to take her home back to the United States. The funeral home was a bit surprised about his certainty and said, that's an interesting choice. Do you mind telling us why you're going to spend $10,000 when you could bury her here for one hundred and fifty? The man said, well, about 2,000 years ago, a man that was, died and was buried here, and three days later, he rose from the grave. <laughs> I'm not going to take that chance. <laughs> All joking aside. Easter is not a one-day event. Easter is not a one-day celebration. It's, it's not really about the bunny rabbits and the golden eggs, just as Christmas isn't really about reindeer and presents. You see, Easter really is about this, the promise that the God who loved the world is the same God who loves the world. And I don't know about you, but I know for me, when I, when I hear that question every Easter morning, why do you look for the living among the, da- the dead? I stand in wonderment. And I think about my own life, about the stones that Jesus and God's Spirit have rolled away from my path that once blocked it. I think about how the empty tomb is actually, in fact, an open door that leads us into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. And I wonder, I do wonder, if Easter is a promise of new life and life everlasting. And we are an Easter people. Then wouldn't it be the case that today, today and tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and so on is a new day in our walk and our journey with him. I've often wondered where that road will take us. Where that journey will lead. Will we too rush to an empty tomb? Or come to the foot of a cross? I have a feeling. I have a feeling that while none of us know the answers... That I have a hope that this journey that we're on is a new path that leads us closer to the heart of God and to life everlasting. He is risen. He is risen indeed.
Amen. As we come to this time of sharing of communion together, of celebrating this meal that Jesus set before us, we invite all of you to participate who profess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Our deacons will come forward and dismiss you, and you're invited to come forward and receive, or we have uh, communion to go packets available uh, in the back of the sanctuary as well. It's recorded in God's holy word that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread. And after giving thanks for it, he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to them and said, take and eat, for this is my body that has been broken for you. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took a cup. And after giving thanks for it, he blessed it and he gave it to them and said, take and drink. For this is my blood, the blood of a new covenant, is poured out for one and for all. So often as we eat from this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please pray with me. We have accepted your invitation this Easter Sunday to the table that you have prepared for us. Help us to see it in a new way. In the presence of the risen Christ, we are invited to see what has become dead in our lives and in a life-giving way because of your great love. We have witnessed that death is not final. We have seen the risen Christ. Help us to see this ordinary bread in a new way, that it shows us the way of the risen Christ. Open our hearts that we may see and understand your love as shown to us in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy God. We ask you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this cup re representing the blood Christ shed for us. Bless it to the souls of all who receive it. As we drink from this cup, we remember that you are the giver of life. You are forgiveness. You bring deep peace to our souls, and your love flows within us. 
Just as the tombstone rolled away to release the risen Lord, your light shines in our hearts now, extinguishing all darkness to release heaven's blessing upon us. In your gracious and giving name, we pray. Amen. As we continue to prepare, let us confess our faith. I believe in Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God, and I seek to follow him as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, choir. What a beautiful message. John 3.16 is probably the most recognized verse in all of the Bible. 
More people have that verse memorized than any others. I even referenced it in the prayer of invocation, and unbeknownst to me, it's even printed on the insert in the bulletin. Say that verse out loud with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This weekend of Easter, we're celebrating the death, burial, and resurrection of God's Son, Jesus. His death on the Christ and his resurrection assure for us forgiveness of sin, and thus, please, peace with God. Those accepting Jesus receive eternal life. That's forever. That's the promise of John 3.16, and it is what our celebration of Easter is all about. Did you notice how John 3.16 began? For God so loved that he gave. God gave us what was most valuable to him, his own son. Why did he do that? Because he loves us. When you love someone, you give them your best. Every week we take up an offering to help support all of our work in ministry and missions here at this church and to extend into the community and the world. We're able to do what we do, sharing the good news of Jesus as a direct result of the generosity of your time, your talents, and your tithing. Our offering is a time of worship where we can express gratitude and celebrate the love God showed and for all that he has given us. For us, it's a thankful and joyful time. For God so loved that he gave. Let's show our love to God by giving faithfully today. If you didn't leave your offering as you came in, be a plate by the door where you may leave it as you leave the sanctuary today. The deacon will now bring forward today's offering. great and giving Father, thank you for your generous gift of eternal life. Your generosity overflows to us. Everything we have is a gift from you. In addition to our praise and thanksgiving this Easter morning, we offer these blessings to be used further, to further your work and glorify your kingdom here on earth. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. If there's anyone here that's new to the community or yet to establish a church home, you feel that God is calling you to become a part of this family of faith here at Norwich Christian Church, we would invite you to come forward uh, during the Hallelujah Chorus. If you would like to join the choir and sing the Hallelujah Chorus, your opportunity to join them is right now. Come <laughs> on. Make sure my mic's off on this one.
seated for just a minute. I'm going to invite Brett and Shelby and Bridger and Bristol up here. They have come forward this morning to join Knoll Ridge Christian Church. And and y'all are really, really, really special. But I tell you, the baby's even cuter than all of y'all. <laughs> so, I'm going to ask you all the question that we've talked about and that most folks in here have answered. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and do you accept him as your one and only Savior? Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. And Shelby, I'm going to ask you the same question. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and your one and only Savior? Yes. Amen. Awesome. We are so glad you guys are joining us. We are going to welcome you with loving arms, and we're going to love on y'all, and especially the baby. <laughs> so, welcome. Absolutely. Amen, Bridger. Will you all join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day in which we gather here as your church at worship. We thank you for the new life that we are reminded of and sprung forth every day. And we pray that as we leave this place, that you would speak to us from on high. Love us with a love that is everlasting and continue to set our hearts on fire with your amazing love. Amen. Amen. Amen.